Hello, this is Jerry Penn. This video, I'm gonna go through all the features and basic controls for the 2021 Volkswagen Tiguan. This particular vehicle is the base model 1400cc turbocharged TSI. Um, and we call it Tiguan Life in New Zealand. This is the walk around. So first off, from the key, key fob, uh, obviously press the button that locks the vehicle and the remote reporting um, as standard uh, from factory settings and open the vehicle just by press the unlock button and you guys, as you can see the remote opens up and to open the tailgate push and hold this button on the 2021 model and the auto tailgate is standard these days so that's how the tailgate looks like once it's fully opened at the back you get storage space underneath plus wheel uh, spare wheel it's not the full size you get jack and tools on each side other things um, this particular thing will hold up up to this level once it's pushed up otherwise you can drop this down um, as accessories for the 21 model as standard on the older Volkswagen Tiguan you get the cargo net that hooks on the side of the, the at the back and you get a barrier so it's a barrier that goes in between uh, the rear seat and also your uh, rear cargo space uh, these are standard they used to be actuals uh, but they are now standard on the 2021 model and uh, you can take this off if you, if you need it just basically unhook this and pull it out you can also drop the seats at the back so to drop the seats pull this lever over here just pull all the way you can now the seats being released you will still manually give it a push sometimes it will stuck in between um, this side applies to that yeah that's basically the back uh, everything else is pretty simple you get a charging port over there 12 volt socket you get some hooks points on the side these tethering points will hold your cargo net by the way same will apply to that side that's the cargo net um, um, barrier uh, so yeah that's that everything in the back and to close it basically press this button just one touch it goes all the way obviously you can use your key control to close it as well uh, basically press and hold this key fob so that's how the exterior looks like on the right hand side you get your fuel tank so just push this open as long as your vehicle is unlocked uh, and obviously premium only so 95 or 98 95 as minimum and open the rear seats this is how it looks like you get this nice fabric um, fabric seats with stitchings at the back you do get a charging port and plus aircon controls so the vehicle um, the passenger at the back will be able to adjust the temperatures themselves and simply I'll just push this up the seats up so you can see the seats you can adjust the uh, height so the uh, angle basically just by pulling this lever over here you can just uh, angle forward and backwards and after that you get armrest in the center so the armrest is, sits over there and uh, so yeah that's how the back looks like you get two storage space uh, sort of for your phones or tablet and a big storage space underneath and cabin on the side and door uh, trims on the side yep that's the back seat so another way to unlock and lock the vehicle because this has a keyless entry system so what you need just basically put your finger here you can see the door now locks itself and then put your hands in the handrail then handles and then the door unlocks itself that's basically the basic control to get in and out of the vehicle as long as you have the key in your pocket it works from the driver door and the passenger door at the front so that's the controls now we're going to move the vehicle into the showroom because it's uh, too much reflection under the sunlight apart from that other things with these controls menu seats go up and down you can adjust the, the back recline forward and backwards this is the lumbar support push this padding and out and sliding it's just underneath the seat just on the left and same apply from the other side you get sliding up and down forward and backwards so that's the basic control for the seats so I'm just gonna turn it off and move the vehicle in the showroom and show you all the other features cool now the vehicle is in the showroom I'll just show you all the features and buttons on the door side first uh, so controls on the door side uh, you get window controls and that allows you to go up and down the, all the windows controls front and rear just gonna zoom in one second and then you get things like um, 
uh, folding windmills, so left and right, allow you to adjust the different windmills. Right, go up and down, left, up and down, left and right, obviously. And this is an off position. You get heated windmill as well, so let's say in the winter morning, everything is all fogged up. Uh, and you get uh, you get you can switch this position to this switch the uh, windmill controls to this position it will heat up your both of the windmills and then at some point just switch back again so stop the heating windmill you can also manually fold in the windmill by pushing to the uh, switch to this position and to open it up again switch to all or left and right position the windmill will open up again and you get window controls for the back window lock for the uh, rear passenger and door lock control, lock and lock, and lock control. Apart from that, you also get a um, tailgate button. So just pull the tailgate, it goes all the way, and push the tailgate, the tailgate close all the way. It'll make the beeping sound because uh, from distance, just try to give some warnings, all that things. Cool, this is how the interior, cool, this is how the interior looks like. Um, light switching, so it's on auto, it has, does have the auto light function, so it is on off position. Auto, parking lights, and headlights. So you want to leave it auto all the time, just so it switch on, switch off automatically. Um, but if you do need to, you can manually switch them on. You also notice the rear, um, how do you say, the rear uh, fog lights. So you can just pull it back. You have the rear fog lights on. Otherwise, pull it, pull it flat. No, 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 no gap, no hinge. That means the rear fog light is off. And then the vehicle also have standard LED daytime running lights. So as long as your vehicle is on, the LED daytime running lights will be switched on automatically. So you won't be able to switch the LED daytime running lights off, by the way. Let's jump in the vehicle. So to switch on the vehicle, so you will need to... So to switch on the vehicle, you need to have the foot on the brake, then push this button, and obviously keys inside your pocket before you can switch on the vehicle. Just build the volume, and uh, so you can see all the controls on the driver dash, driver and uh, driver steering. So this particular, obviously, that's the horn. Just push it down for the horn. Uh, on the left hand side, that's your system programs plus your um, adaptive cruise control, all those functions. On the right hand side, that's your um, assistant, that's your controls for the digital dash screen. So to control the dig um, small digital panels in the center, so you can go left and right, up and down to change your display displays. For example, we are at zero case power, that means we are on digital speed sort of thing. Uh, so you can go right, that allows you to change to assistant systems. Go right, that allows you to change to audio. Goes to right, allows you to change to telephone. Goes to right, it goes to vehicle statues, big driving data. So it goes left and right, goes in a loop basically. Let's say if we're staying, if we are staying driver driving data, you can go up and down afterwards. So go up, give you warning at, warning at a particular case, uh, all your temperature, give you consumptions, and give you average consumption, all that things. So you can change the different things whichever you like, and stay in there after a few seconds, it will stay in a particular screen you like. And you can notice on the left hand side, that's traditional analog dial for the speedo, that's the water temperature, and the, your odometers for the 117 case, and your trip is 117 case for the trip. And in the center, you get your um, time uh, gears, which is on park. And uh, again, traditional analog dive for the case. Sorry, that's the revs, and that's the case. And then you get a fuel tank on the side. And then you can go to things like, for example, assistance systems. It will show you adaptive cruise control, every other things if you need. So that's basically how the control looks like on this screen. And thing, other things you can do is you can click the view button. It brings back us to the driving data again. Otherwise, click view again. It goes back to your last screen. And uh, you can get your audio, whichever uh, radio station or music you're playing into. And you can get your telephone. You can see your selection of telephone. You can see your selections of uh, contacts, all that things as well. So yeah, that's basically what uh, what's available on this particular screen panel. And uh, you also get voice command. Uh, and uh, oh, sorry, this function is not available on this particular model, by the way. Uh, so you won't be able to use that at all. Uh, other things, you get track controls, left and right, allows you to go to uh, things like uh, 
um, three different radio stations and when your Bluetooth is connected obviously it goes to different uh, sounds, tracks sort of thing. On the left hand side that's your cruise control and, and assistance programs. So basically to activate the cruise control uh, you simply press this button so you can see on the dashboard the still shows the trip and the odometer so I'm just gonna press this button no odometer sign instead will show the trip sign. And that means the cruise control is ready to engage whenever the vehicle is driving basically so let's say we're driving on the road we're driving on 50 k's all i need to do is just press set button tap the set button and the vehicle will set a particular case at the moment it doesn't set it us because we're now driving we're still in park when you're set on particular case on the at the left bottom it will, the signal from will change from gray to green that means you're ready your vehicle is will drive on set a particular set speed let's say 50 or 100 whichever you set and to change the change the uh, setting speed you can press plus or minus it will round up to something times by tens let's say you are set at 50 plus it'll go to 60 go to 70 go to 80 the minus goes back to 70 go to 60 and go to 50 again the lowest the set speed you can set on this particular vehicle is 30 k's uh, for that uh, clock and then another to another way to do the micro adjustment for the speedo is to press resume or reset or resume or set to go this is go up by one so 51 52 this go by go down by one press set goes down by 49 48 so that's how to set the sp uh, speedo your cruise control basically and another button over here this is to set your distance between us and the front vehicle so because it's had adaptive cruise control um, what the vehicle does is even your set case 100 k's for example and uh, the vehicle your driving distance or your uh, your your how do you say the traffic in front of you only is traveling 30 k's per hour the vehicle itself will brake and accelerate and uh, depends on the speed of the vehicle in front of you so you all all you need to do is just control your distance between you and the front vehicle by press this button so if I press this button you can see the pops up so longer distance and shorter distance you can see different bars in front of the vehicle and uh, obviously shorter distance is more like a two second difference and longer distance will be more like four seconds up to five seconds difference so that that really depends on your set speed and your driving speed and the vehicle speed in front of you uh, so that's how to set the um, distance between you and the front vehicle and once obviously that everything is set, the vehicle will drive on your set speed when the road is cleared. And when someone is traveling low at lower speed uh, in front of you, the ve your vehicle will automatically brake and slow down to keep a safe distance. And in any situation, if you don't want the cruise control, simply apply the brake or simply touch this button to cancel the cruise control. Again, when your cruise con control is on, it will show green light. And when your cruise control is paused or canceled, it's either no symbol or gray, gray light. That means your cruise control is uh, paused or canceled. You also get another thing called travel assist. So this particular travel assist is a very, very new feature for this particular vehicle. So how that works is when you're on cruise control, when you set, when you press the cruise control, when you press set, when you go change your speed or change your distance, you can then press this button or engage your travel assist program. So how that works is when your vehicle is on whatever speed it's driving 30k, 10k, 100k, whenever your set k is, and the vehicle also added another feature, it will balance your steering to keep you in the right center. It will help you with it will use the sensor in front of you uh, to identify the vehicle in front of you and identify the line marking to keep you in the right uh, center sort of thing. So that helps with the daily drive with this travel assist. And in any time when you're on cruise control, simply press this button, you can engage the cruise um, travel assist. After the travel assist, you can still press plus or minus, reset, reset or set, or press the distance between you and the front vehicle. That just helps with daily drive. If you don't like the land keeping with the steering assist, you don't have to have that. You can just use these buttons to have the adaptive cruise control only. So yeah, that's all the cruise control buttons. After that, you get your volume button plus or minus to change your volume. And then you will notice a small button on the side. This is a very different button from all the lighting control. We'll just talk about this button individually. So if you tap this button, you can see now the pop-up screen on the screen. You will show the length assist, uh, adaptive cruise control, speed limit, and side assist. And then everything at the bottom as well. 
So we'll just explain the couple things on the top before we go through the other things. First one is called Adaptive Cruise Control ACC. The second one, sorry. And that means the vehicle at the moment using these controls will on Adaptive Cruise Control. But if I go press down, click speed limit, and now you can see the speed limit is engaged. Then our cruise control button, our cruise control symbol, changes to back to speed limit symbol. That means I'm gonna just go on the road again, then press set. The vehicle will set at my speed limit at particular case I, I set. And what that means is the vehicle will now limit your my throttle response, limit your limit my speed to, uh, for example, 50k. Uh, I'm still driving using pedal brake accelerator. Um, but the vehicle does not allow me to go with 50k by the way then you can change the speed by press and my plus or minus reset or set go up and down um, then again no this gray light that means the limit is not there but if i can press set and then go up and down the, the limit will be there with a green light that means the speed limit is on so that's how to control the speed limit uh, again if i tap this button on the side and just press down change to ACC that means it's our adaptive cruise control again so I can use this as a normal cruise control again and then next one the top one is called a lane assist so I can have it on or have it off whenever you like so if the lane assist is on whenever you have the cruise control on or whenever you have the travel assist on or off the vehicle would what the vehicle does is when you drive over 60 k power the vehicle can see your lane marking in front of you and it will try to balance you in the right center in case you are drifting out your lane marking so that's called the lane assist and press the button again go up and down let's go to the side assist so that thing will be a will basically be your blind spot detection so your wind mirror on the right your wind mirror on the left that vehicle will basically uh, help you to see what's behind you when you drive and then if someone is traveling behind you this light bar on the wind mirror will light up Again, if you don't like it, you can untick that particular function uh, whenever you like by pressing that button. So that's the side assist. And then going down, that's the rear traffic cross alert. How that works is if I'm going to put the vehicle on reverse and then there's someone traveling behind me, um, left and right, the vehicle will give you me alert when I'm reverse out of the car park just in case I, my, I reverse too fast. So then, again, if you don't like it, you can leave it off. Otherwise, you can leave it on. Uh, once it's ticked and then let's go to the last one this is called front assist so front assist how that works is uh, when you are driving forward and then someone's crossing the road without looking left and right or a vehicle in front of you just come to a complete emergency stop and then your vehicle will alert you first if in the last seconds you still no reaction from the driver the vehicle will eventually give you a full emergency braking or give you a good emergency braking to keep you in a safe distance or slow you down to zero so that's how the front assist works again if you don't like it you can take it off and to further details you can go into this car setting oh sorry menu setting and simply go to the assistant systems you can check all the information by click setting button you can check whatever is available in that particular um, screen settings uh, otherwise, you can the direct button is press this button, go up and down that screen, click OK and OK, or click OK to tick and untick the box for the adaptive cruise control and all the system systems. So that's about that. Yep. And other things you notice: indicator left and right, up and down, flash and high beam forward. That's all very normal. Uh, high beam back backwards to push on push off the high beam. And then windscreen wiper, it's automatic by the way. So at this level, it's not, it's off. Just push it down. It only put wipe once and pull up again. It will be automatic. Then when it's on automatic, you can use this switch forward, forward and backwards to change the least sensitivity or maximum sensitivity. So you can switch left and right. Otherwise, one position up will be on low speed. One position up again will be on high speed. So you, you, you did either leave it auto position or off position whenever you like and you can also use the rear wiper so just by push it forward rear wiper on and rear wiper off by pulling it back against the steering if you do want to watch the rear wiper push it all the way and hold to um, watch the rear wiper to front watch the front wiper pull it all the way against the steering to watch the front wiper so that's about everything controls on the steering uh, then you can also get small buttons over here to use as a uh, pedal shifters 
plus, um, sorry, minus and plus on each side, we want to change to menu mode. Uh, so you can change to menu mode when you shift on drive, by the way. So yeah, that's about these controls on the driving dashboard. Now I'll jump back to the middle screen. Uh, so this is how the display panel looks like. A very nice full panel display. Uh, so the buttons on the side allows you to go to the um, how do you say direct controls for, for example things radio media setup sound all that things uh, you can just simply touch this um, icon on the side and otherwise the center display is how it looks like uh, it's called touch screen obviously uh, so first thing we'll just go to the menu button so click the menu button you'll see all the menus that's available for this particular screen and uh, you'll see the small wave icon on the side that allows you to just wave in front of the screen left and right it's not going to be most accurate, so otherwise just swap, swap these to left and right. First one, radio controls, uh, so you can see the radio station at the moment, that's the radio station we are playing at the moment, and these are your favorite presets at the moment. You can change the different presets, otherwise you can see your station list by clicking stations, that's the available stations in your area. For example, I can click this radio station, and if I do want to save that first one, simply click and hold now the first radio station is saved at the first one and then if you can click source allow it to change to fm my media and bluetooth audios uh, so obviously sampling applies to the am if you do want to go through your stations there are some settings buttons you can change your settings screens here over here with the radio controls after that menu button we can go to the telephone uh, obviously to connect your smartphone you always have the uh, this device name and number over here would you just basically unlock your phone go to your setting menu and search this particular name on your Bluetooth icon uh, so that's the easiest way um, click menu button again vehicle settings uh, so click your uh, to change your vehicle settings you can also have all the settings over here things like ESC system that's your stability control system and tires you can just research your tire program uh, monitoring system obviously the vehicle has the tire pressure loss indicator that means if your, one of your tire pressure has got punctured got low on the pressure uh, you will be able to reset just through the tire pressure monitoring system lighting controls you can change your lighting controls on switch on time on the headlight range controls on auto headlights controls in green all that things you can change these things items uh, personalize them if you like it Next one, parking and maneuvering. Uh, so you can change your sort of guidance. Um, how do you say? You get obviously front and rear parking sensors. You can change all your tones or your volume, all the things, front and rear. And there's another thing called maneuver braking. So it is active at the moment. What that means when you reverse, when you, but you are reversing too fast um, and then you are likely to crash into the vehicle at the back or the objective at the back, the vehicle will give you a emergency braking. Uh, before you crash into something or someone so it is active at the moment again if you don't like it you can deactivate by and, and take that uh, another thing is uh, the parking distance control will activate automatically so what that means is uh, when you get close to something at the front the vehicle parking sensor will automatically engage itself so that's the um, parking distance control basically parking sensors next one mirrors and wipers obviously just get your lowering reverse gear when it means your rear mirror on the left will lower uh, when you put a vehicle on reverse folding when locking so that's all the general controls um yeah so that's just controls itself you don't you don't need to change it unless you like it opening and closing uh first one is convenience opening so you can switch it on switch it off if you need it so when it's switched off it doesn't do anything but if let's say we switch on to all windows that means when you're hot summer i'm just going to use the key fob click the, un the unlock button and hold all the way and all the windows will drop down all the way and then if i want to close the back in i just click click the hold uh, click and hold the lock button and then all the windows will go back up so that's the convenience opening Again, if you don't need it, you don't you don't have it off, or you can have it on driver window, you can have it on all windows, whatever you like. Next one, door unlocking. So it is on all doors, but if it's just yourself driving the vehicle, you can just unlock the single door. That means when you unlock the vehicle, only the driver door unlocks, or the vehicle side. So only unlocks the vehicle driver door and the driver side uh, rear door. Otherwise, all doors will be unlocked. 
Another feature, lock automatically when driving. That means that when the vehicle drives off to a certain speed, the vehicle locks locks the how do you say locks the auto central locking automatically. It's uh, something I prefer, but if whether you prefer or not, you can take and take it. Interior monitoring. Uh, so when your vehicle is switched off, there's a monitoring system that ongoing with the vehicle. That you accidentally left a dog inside the vehicle, or left a cat, or left a baby in the vehicle. It will have give you alarm in case you do you do leave someone inside when there is a moving objective. Click left. Uh, instrument cluster that you can change your different uh, consumptions or other things in the vehicle car systems. Otherwise, you can leave it off. And time and date where you can change your time and date. You can change the menu. You can change the GPS as well. Uh, you can ch click summertime. You can change the date. All that things by yourself. Uh, units, nothing to mention. It's all New Zealand units. Unless you want to change the temperature to PS, uh, sorry, pressure, the air pressure with the with the tires to temp PSI or bars or KPA, that's your choice. Otherwise, service, you can see your service interval. So obviously, all your changes every fifteen thousand k's or every year, whichever comes first. So yeah, that's about the vehicle settings. And uh, let's go back to the menu again. Uh, next one will be sound. You can change your sound stage, sound systems. Um, all that things you can change your positioning, you can change your volume, all that things again. Um, you can change them manually. Um, I won't go through that. Uh, media, we basically when your phone is connected, you can play media by click this. Again, there's no files available because nothing's attached to the vehicle. And menu again, app connect that's your basic your Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, or Mirror Link. But most people will use these two Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. So underneath the cable, you'll find two, underneath the center console, you'll find the two USB-C um, charging cable. So you'll be able to use that as a um, plug to your basically iPhone or Android phones. Uh, once it's plugged in, it will allow you to have access to Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. All you need to do is just basically authorize it on your phone. You have map and all that contact display on the screen itself. So that's the Apple CarPlay. Uh, yeah, so it should be pretty easy through the two cables over there. Um, mention something to me worth mentioning this is this is USB C by the way. So if you have an old type of USB A cable, you need to use a uh, adapter or get a new cable from no uh, local electrician shop. Uh, so yeah, next one is menu. Then you can sit, you get your assistant program. So you have a nice graphic shows you all the what's it doing, but easy ways to click settings. And you have access to all the things that's available. For example, first one is ACC, our adaptive cruise control, driving profile is normal. You can go eco, comfort, normal, sport. That means uh, to change that, what that means is when your vehicle pick up to a particular speed on cruise control, it will be a little bit more sporty, it will be a little bit more comfort, or a little bit more eco whenever you like. And distance control, it's on medium at the moment. You can change it whenever you like. Obviously, easier way is to press this button to change, but you can also press this one as well. Front assist, that's your pre-collision warning. In case you want to read something, click information. That explains what, what this function does. It's recommended to leave it on, obviously. Uh, land assist, side assist, that's all system systems here. And they are all there. In case you do need to change it or anything like that, just click in and cancel it if you like. So the system system, click menu again, aircon, that's basically all your air controls display over here. At the moment it is switched off by the way. Uh, so if you do want to change anything on the aircon, simply touch these buttons. The new system has all the touch sensitive buttons. So what I'm going to do is press the volume button for the fan speed button. You can see it goes up and down. You can see the light bars lights there. It's very hard to see on the video, but when you drive an actual vehicle, you notice that, that bars light up. I can swap left and right, change that. And then you get temperatures on each side, so I can press the hold button on this side to choose temperatures, or I can swap as well. So two ways to change your temperature. Uh, you also get sync button, so that means two temperature at the moment, that's different. But if I press sync button, it, they're all going to be connected to each other. And off, just switch it off. AC, that means the AC is on, AC is off. Uh, recirculation, uh, recirculation on, recirculation off. And heated remover that's at the back and front windscreen uh, blast that's at the front uh, otherwise you can leave on auto so it's switch on switch off uh, switch on the aircon for you automatically otherwise if you touch the num uh, touch the fan speed again it will switch switch the auto off so that's how to control the aircon you can have the menu button simply click menu obviously this pop up 
then you will be able to see what your aircon controls are like you can actually control everything on here as well uh, you can have set your rear temperature you can lock the rear one as well just in case kids having too much fun at the back or too cold at the back or anything like that. otherwise you can as long as you click sync all the temperature will connect to each other air care uh, just aggressive air filter program in case you, you, you your air conditioning or your air condition in the particular area is not so good you can activate that otherwise you don't need to do that so yeah that's about the aircon next one swap right that's help that's just for tips and tricks to use this screen we don't need to go through that um, somehow this shows another radio so this should be should be in the case for most of the vehicle you don't need to worry about the radio just gonna switch it off otherwise settings uh, you can have settings for the screen uh, that allows you to see these particular uh, um, different switches, all the things. Uh, you have time and date again, you can change your things, you can change your language, you can manage your mobile device, you can change your all the devices, you can restore your uh, factory settings, all that. Nothing major over here is for the menu settings. So yeah, that's pretty much about how the, air, uh, how the middle screen looks like. And aircon, obviously, we have gone through that. Next one will be the um, gear selector. So what we want to do to change gears, you need to hold the brake before you go into any gears. At the moment, it's on park. Again, on your dashboard, it's always show on the right top of the dash. So I can put it on reverse. It's on reverse. You can see the reverse camera pops up. You get all the parking sensors around the vehicle. If you get close to something, it will obviously beep for you. And put on neutral drive so that's how it goes on drive if you do want to switch to quickly switch to sports mode you can push it backwards it will be on s so again pull it back it'll be on drive pull it back it'll be on s so switching between drive and s drive just a normal driving mode s is a little bit more throttle response on sports mode basically so that's how to switch to drive and s otherwise push it all the way to park and pull all the way to drive again and then menu mode you can switch this to right it will be on menu mode you can go up and down to go plus or minus to change your menu mode again we're on menu mode so switch on m1 so that's how that looks like though i switch back and switch all the way to public again so my vehicle hasn't fully switched on that's why it has all the warning light all the things you don't need to worry about that and handbrake so to release the handbrake push this is off Again, you have to hold your brake, manual brake, before you can switch off the handbrake and pull it to leave it on. You have this light telling you the handbrake is on or a red light telling you the handbrake is on. Auto hold. So you can press this button to have this functional. Obviously, you have to have the vehicle running. And that means when this particular orange light comes on, the auto hold function will be engaged. How that works is when you drive to a certain, uh, how do you say, a, when you come to a complete stop, the vehicle will hold your handbrake automatically. Uh, instead of showing the orange and the red color, uh, it will show a green parking color, parking sort of symbol. That means when your gear is on drive, yeah, but the vehicle will hold your handbrake without you actually applying the brake at the complete stop. Uh, when the traffic light goes green or when the giveaway is uh, safe is clear again you're ready to go you just press the pedal on the throttle the vehicle will go forward uh, releasing your handbrake automatically so that's the auto hold function itself so if you don't like it obviously leave it off there's no light if you like it you can press this button the vehicle will automatically hold your brake uh, traffic light Next one, and you get your two buttons on this side. First one is your parking sensors. So when your when your parking sensor is not on, you can press this button to engage your parking sensor. Press it, you can see the parking sensor engaged. You can see your reverse camera parking sensor engaged. If you don't want it, press this button. That's off. But when you automatically when you put the vehicle on reverse, it automatically switch on anyway. Next one is your parallel parking assist. So when you see any parking space on the side of the road. Uh, before you drove over, before you drive over and over to that parking space, simply click this button. The vehicle will just, uh, start scanning the the open space on the side of the vehicle on the side of the road. Uh, when secured, uh, you, all you need to do is basically put the vehicle on reverse and leave your hands off the steering, and then simply uh, give a little bit pressure on the brake, and the vehicle will start moving into the parking space and it will tell you to go back to drive again or steer back for you so there's a uh, tons of tutorial online to go through this park assist you can just simply search park assist Volkswagen you will be able to see how to use that particular feature 
otherwise um, no touch that means the function is off after that you get your cup holders on the side you can just press the button the cup holder opens up if you want to slide in just push this one of the rails back in and press one of the rails and back in armrest that's just in the center console uh, in the go box you'll find your owner's menu all that information uh, yeah so that's pretty much majority of the features in the center console oh um has the light just press the button has the light switch on switch off aircon switch off or switch on whenever you like and other things you'll get your lighting controls on the top so that's for your rear lights that's for your reading lights that's for your door lights the door lights when it's pushed in that means when if i open the driver door or passenger door the other lights will light up if i push this off no lights will light up and another reading light from the back and uh, rear lights on the back as well uh, on the center console you get storage space normally two sunglasses holder over here uh, three more sunglasses holder at the back for the rear passenger so that's very handy I think that's pretty much all about um, the features for the 2021 Volkswagen Tiguan um, this is the base model TSI by the way and if you have questions uh, just let me know thank you